In this video, you're going to learn how to analyze rental property, and I'm really going to show you three main things. Number one, how to understand what a good property, rental property looks like. Number two, how to determine the cost of repairs. Uh, you know, how do you uh, factor this into your offer? And then lastly, to determine does this property have good cash flow? Now, this is something that every investor wants to know. What is the cash flow going to be? And so I'm going to show you how to figure this out. And then you can really adjust your offer based on what you want your cash flow to be. And at the end of the day, this is a numbers game. So you, you're going to need to make a lot of offers to get that deal that you want. But we're going to look at that. And the best thing is we're going to look at a real life example. I found this property, this foreclosure in my hometown. And so we're going to pull this thing out. We're going to look at it. I'm going to tell you the pros and the cons, and then we'll just do the numbers. And then you're going to have access to the very same tool that we use to look at and to analyze rental property. So let's dive in right now. Okay, so here we are. We're going to start with this spreadsheet. This is just a spreadsheet that we use when we're calculating how to make an offer. I'm going to back into this number so that you can determine, hey, what should I be asking for this property? And then here's the property that we're going to be looking at. This is a foreclosure I found here in Birmingham. As you can see by the pictures, it's going to need some work. I would say it's probably going to need paint, uh, some flooring work. I think the floors are just dusty. We'd have to go out and take a look. The cabinets are outdated. They're okay. Probably some new hardware on them. Maybe a new countertop. It looks like the bathroom is okay. Of course, you're going to have paint and, and different things here, but... Yeah, but this is a solid house. I mean, this is a three bedroom, two bath house. In this area, there's a lot of three ones, three one and a half. So a three two is really good. It's built 1958. I think this is a solid house. It's a brick house. And I love the square footage. 1116 square foot just means it's an efficient house. The residents aren't going to pay a ton to heat and cool this property. So it's going to be a good deal. Now, the Zestimate here the retail value of the house, what we say is the ARV, after repair value, is they say 115000 I would say probably closer around one twenty-five, around 125000 So let's go ahead, and I've already entered some of the information here. Uh, the asking price is one fifteen. I'm going to say the ARV, I'm going to say it's 125000 That's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to hold off on the purchase price. So I want to I want to talk about the rehab budget because I mentioned repairs and so you have in the spreadsheet you've got this right here if you wanted to go into detail so if you sent a contractor out to the property and they gave you an itemized list of repairs and how much it's going to cost you could plug that into this part of the spreadsheet right here or you don't have to do that. You could literally just put a number in. So if I'm eyeballing this property, I'm going to say, you know, it's not a lot of heavy uh, demo work and not a lot of work. Tons of work needs to be done, but I'm going to budget for around 15000 in repairs. And you may think that's a lot. It's really not a lot, but I would say to redo the floors, paint the property, uh, you know, put new... Uh, you know, freshen up the bathrooms, freshen up the kitchen. I want to make this as a desirable place to live as possible. This could be less. Ultimately, what you want to do is when you're getting ready to make an offer, you want to make estimates. And then if you get the property under contract, then you want to have an inspection done. Then you want to get a firm quote. And you probably don't have a lot of time to do that because demand is high for properties, but you should be able to do that within, I would say, 15 days. So this is that's probably what you may have is about 15 days to close after you get it under contract. Different people, it's just going to be different um, depending on who you're working with. So this is it. I'm not putting it, again, I'm not putting in the purchase price just yet. I want to keep on going down. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say, Hey, I'm going to do a, a down payment. I'm going to finance this. I'm going to do a down payment of 20%. Uh, I'm going to have an interest rate of 7%. We know that we're seeing 7% in some cases, some are different, some are 8%. It all depends on the person where you're getting your financing. And I'm going to say loan term 30 years cash invested is going to be the 15,000, but I hadn't done my down payment yet. And then I come up here and I'm going to say my projected rent, I'm going to say is around $1,200. So what it's going to do is this is all automatically going to put in vacancy at 5%. So just, you know, even if you get it 
rented and it keeps stays rented for four years, you still want to keep vacancy number in there just so you know, hey, at some point there's going to be a vacancy and you're going to have to turn that property. You're going to have to go in, probably paint, fix flooring, make it look good, put it on the market, show it to people and then rent it. So there is going to be some vacancy. I like accounting for that. Then if you keep going down property taxes, uh, I've got, I'm going to say $1,800 a year. And, and it's probably like maybe homestead taxes are $900. You're going to have to double that for non-homestead, which means you're going to pay double taxes because you're not living in the house. This is not your primary residence. So taxes double here in Jefferson County. Insurance, I'm going to say maybe $1,200 a year. I know that insurance has been going up uh, over the you know past I don't know, six to 12 months, we've seen insurance prices rise, but I'm going to say $1,200 a year here. Management fee, you can manage this yourself and not spend this money, but I'm going to say we're going to manage, we're going to have a standard management fee of 10%. No HOA in this area. And then maintenance reserve. I want to set aside things for maintenance. Even if I'm spending $15,000 to paint it, to get everything ready, you still want to set aside money. You may not have $1,400 worth of repairs done on it year one, or maybe even year two. So maybe for 18, 24 months, maybe you did such an incredible job of rehabbing it that you don't need any of those repairs, but you need to be setting this money aside because the more somebody lives in a property, the more chances you're going to have repair. And this house was built in 1958, so it's not like a brand new build. There's going to be things that kind of break down you're going to need to take care of. So you see the operating expenses of $5,880, right? So uh, this is, so total expenses, $5,880. And so now I want to say, well, what should I offer for this property? What should my, what, what do I need to be in this property to make it a good deal for me? So I want to say this real quick. Here we are. Uh, it, it, it is it is very, very tough to get a, an incredible deal like we were seeing back in, you know, of course, I was buying houses in the mid-2000s, and then we saw people getting deals, you know, right after the, the housing crisis in 2008. We saw people getting steals, incredible deals. You probably all heard about the 1% rule, which means if I'm paying $100,000 for a house, I need to get at least $1,000 a month rent. So everybody's heard about that. Is that doable? You know, possibly. But just understand it's going to be a little bit different just depending on the market that you're in and depending on the uh, interest rate environment that we're in right now, depending on also the demand for property. So you're going to have to take all that into consideration. But let's just say I want the purchase price to be um, $100,000. And I'm not saying that's the number, but if I'm going to put in the purchase price of $100,000, you can already see that it's going to say, hey, your down payment is going to be $20,000, 7% interest. So cash invested is $36,500. That's the down payment plus how much you're going to spend to repair the property. And then what we want to do is we can see right here our returns, our monthly NOI, net operating income, monthly cash flow is $117.76. So the cap rate is right here, a 6.24%. Is this good or not? This is going to be dependent on your goals, what you're trying to achieve. And so if I come over here, I can see, hey, I'm, I'm going to have the cash on cash uh, return on investments of uh, like just below 4%. The, again, the net cash flow is $117.00. Is this something that you're okay with? Is this something you're comfortable with? And then if you went over here to the monthly layout, you can see, wow, it's going to show me January, February, March. And so I'm getting a picture of what it's going to be every single month. Now, I will, I will say, I think this is pretty conservative. So if you, if you spend $15,000, first of all, you may be able to save some money there. So you may get back, you may get a bid back and it's 9,000 or 10,000. And then, so you're going to, you could lower expenses there. Also know that, you know what, you, you're not going to be probably paying a lot for repairs that first year. And so you can save money there. So these are all things that are going to factor into your equation. 
but buying rental property is just, I think this is the best way to look at it. And I want you to be careful. You can torture a spreadsheet to make it say whatever you want it to say, right? You can torture this enough so that it just looks like an incredible deal and you'll pay whatever. Don't do that. Be very objective. Look at these numbers and then decide, then decide, is this a good deal for me? So if I go down here, what you're also, what we're also going to show you is, you know, hey, here's what the property maybe value is going to increase a little bit every year. We're, we're putting in a very small percentage of property value increase. I can't remember exactly how much, but, you know, from 127 to 130 to 132. And so then we get to year five and it's worth 138. I think this is kind of conservative, but that's okay. In a C-class neighborhood, which C-class means this is a working class neighborhood, uh, you know, the, the the great thing I love about C-class neighborhoods, you can find affordable deals. There's a lot of rental demand. The If there was any negative about C-class, you're probably not going to have the type of appreciation that you do in a B-class area, which is upper middle class, or an A-class neighborhood, which is going to be upper class. And uh, But you can see you do get some appreciation. Again, you're going to be paying down the mortgage. So you see at the end of it, profit if sold, and you can see, hey, you're, you are building profit over the years. You're also going to get rental appreciation. So I think this is really, really important. We've also, you know, increased the expenses. We've increased the, um, you know, the property value. All of these things we want to take into consideration. But you can come back here and then you can say, well, you know what? A hundred thousand isn't a good enough deal for me. And so they're asking 115. I know I'm going to have to spend 15 in, in uh, repairs. So I want to make an offer of 90,000. And then if you do 90,000, everything changes. You come back over here to the monthly layout and you have $170 of cash flow. So this is a very simple way that you can look. You, all you have to do is just plug in a few numbers here and there, and you're going to get your monthly NOI, your monthly cash flow. I mean, all of these things you're going to want to examine before you make a deal. So this is the way I would back into a deal and say, hey, they're asking 115. After I run all my numbers, what I believe the repairs are going to be, I'm going to offer this. To me, this is a fantastic way that you can make an offer on a property and you know, be very, very careful about it. I think you need to be very, very objective. Some of my biggest advice to investors is don't fall in love with a deal. Don't think you have to have it. Again, it's a numbers game, so you just want to make a, enough offers so that at one point, you're going to get a deal accepted. Back when I was wholesaling houses, buying them, I was holding some for rentals, I was making probably 20 to maybe 40 offers every single month, and I would end up buying three or four houses every month. It's a numbers game. So use this spreadsheet. As you can see, it didn't take me long to figure this out. If you're working with a, a real estate agent, an investor-friendly real estate agent, they're going to help you. They may be able to plug in some of these numbers or they're going to give you some insight. I would also encourage you talk to a local property manager that is going to give you what the projected rent should be. Don't just listen to anybody, especially somebody who's selling the property. You know, Get their expert advice. We hope you've enjoyed this content. If you have, like the video, subscribe to our channel, and you can have access to this very same spreadsheet. It's in a link down below this video. Go ahead, make a copy of it, and use it to examine and look at your own properties, your own deals. And we hope that this has been really beneficial for you. Come back to our channel. We're going to have more videos. We're going to have more content just like this for real estate investors.